much for making time. So Thank we you, have Eva. seen different countries putting in place measures. We saw yesterday France decided that they were going to waive tax measures, particularly on rent and, and other essential commodities just to buffer their citizens. America also reduced interest rates to 0 0.25. What kind of measures have we seen in the country, if any, and what should we put in place to buffer our people? Thank you, Andiro, for having me. So far, we have not seen concrete measures from the government in the line of what the French have done for their citizens and in the, in the line of what the Americans have done for their citizens. Mm -hmm. Look, when the Federal Reserve of the United States of America reduced their interest rates from 1.25 to 0 0.25, they knew exactly what they were doing. You know, America is a, in an economy centered around heavy borrowing. Yes. So when you reduce interest rates, one, you make borrowing cheaper. Because you, you see, uh, in America, credit cards are used a lot. And you know, that's a form of borrowing. Mm -hmm. So they knew where to target. So they've made borrowing very, uh, very affordable so that people can have easier lives. Secondly, when you reduce interest rates, it affects mortgage payments. Mm -hmm. Because you see, uh, in America, you, the mortgage industry is a big business. Nearly everybody buys property through mortgage. So they knew where to attack. Now, our economy, we have not seen anything that targets exactly the, the bread and butter of our people. Mm -hmm. In any case, the recommendations that have come from the government is that people should stay at home. But in a system where the majority of people live on half a dollar a day, staying at home is really not a very well thought through process because mm -hmm. These people, actually, they live on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. They have to go out to work, or they have to go out and look for work. Now, if they do not go out, how will they eat? Mm -hmm. You see, in, 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 in other jurisdictions, you can ask people to stay at home because food can be delivered at home. Yes. The government actually knows people's addresses. Mm -hmm. They know where to get Ondiro. They know where to get so-and-so. They can deliver food and feed you. But in our system here, we hardly know even where people live. Yes. We have not thought through it that well. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be very difficult even to implement. Mm -hmm. That's why when you look around even in town, people are in town. Yeah. They cannot afford to stay at home mm -hmm. because otherwise they'll die of hunger. And speaking of the way our system is built, there are some sectors that will be really hit hard by this self-isolation and quarantine that the government is pushing for. For example, transport, construction, and even hospitality. Yes. Mm -hmm. It is going to... By the way, we are looking at a situation where the entire economy is restructured mm -hmm. uh, look the aviation industry is hard hit worldwide yeah globally now you you see airports are empty because there is no country that wants to admit people from any country that has declared that it has registered one case mm -hmm. of coronavirus infection flights from that country are banned to other countries so the aviation industry is the first casualty big time casualty mm -hmm. the tourism industry big time and you know kenya tourism is one of our key uh, in income generators so when tourism is hit like this we are in deep trouble so um then we go to imports yes you know kenya is basically an import-based economy mm -hmm. we import a lot of things and of late uh, the last decade or so we have basically been sourcing our imports from china now, the coronavirus, the COVID-19, actually China is the epicenter of this problem. So now there are no flights between Kenya and China. So that means many, many industries and businesses that were centered around the importation of Chinese goods are on their knees. Mm -hmm. That will mean two things. One, that we will experience commodity shortages because the source has been blocked from the other side. Exactly. Two, the little commodities that will still be available, now the prices will skyrocket. And, and the problem is, even in Kenya, when we confirmed our first case, there was panic buying and now shelves are empty for essential goods like masks, hand sanitizers. Yeah, th that was unfortunate. Again, you've, you've, you've mentioned something which is very important. It's always not good for people to panic in the face of an epidemic or a pandemic. When people panic, they lose their heads and they don't know how to manage a situation. Mm -hmm. The best thing to do is to let people know that this pandemic is here, it is with us. 
whether we panic or not, it's here. It's upon us to manage it. So when you panic and you go into some delirium or some paranoia, it, it, people are going to die. Yeah. Because paranoia in, in itself kills. Phobia kills. Fear kills. Even fear of the unknown alone kills. Mm -hmm. It's important that we realize that this is something that has happened. It's with us. It's mm -hmm. upon us to manage it. Mm -hmm. Let's manage it as it is. So Let's listen to the experts. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to basic public health lessons that we were taught when we were young. Wash your hands as frequently as possible. Don't touch your face aimlessly. Mm -hmm. Don't touch your eyes. You remember when you were young, your mother yes. never, always told you never touch your eyes after you have played because yeah. there were eye infections. You would get stomach aches because you would just put your hands in your mouth. Yeah. Those things, those are basic public health issues and uh, personal hygiene uh, lessons that we learned when we were young. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to that and listen to the experts. How do we then manage the global supply chain to ensure that there's uh, a constant flow of goods? The global supply chain has been affected. There's no doubt about it. And now it is upon governments, like this government of ours, it is upon this government to provide incentives. Mm -hmm. People must be given incentives now, because very soon we are going to run out of food. Okay? We, you know, we killed most of our industries. Nowadays, we cannot say that we are self-sufficient, for instance, in sugar. A long time ago, we used to be. Now, we are not. Nowadays, we import sugar. Now, we need to think about how we will source sugar for this population, mm -hmm. how we will source maize for this population, how we will source rice for this population. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal. The government needs to put its act together mm -hmm. so that at least these things are sorted in good time. Because yes. remember, corona was not even the first problem that came. The locusts were here. And when the locusts came, you know, the, the effect of the locusts comes later. Okay. Because they were busy eating, and we had already foreseen that we are going to face food shortages mm -hmm. in the next harvesting season. Then corona happened. So it's a double tragedy. Mm -hmm. So government must now think about food security. Mm -hmm. Seriously. And now this takes us back to even the big four agenda. You know, okay. food security is one of them. Mm -hmm. Manufacturing is the other. Housing is the other. And universal health care. So food, food security is threatened and universal health care is threatened. threatened. Mm -hmm. And also like when you were talking about imports, yes. we must also mention exports. We heavily export flowers and tea. How is this global epidemic going to affect our export sector? For instance, the flower industry is going to be affected. Listen, you see, flowers are basically consumed when people are on the move, not when people are self-quarantined yes. in the houses. People buy flowers to give to their loved ones. People buy flowers to display in offices. Now people are being encouraged to stay at home and work from home, which means offices are, are, not, are not going to open soon. Those who buy flowers to give to their loved ones are at home. Mm -hmm. In fact, I watched on television in Spain, even when you go out jogging, you know your favorite morning jogging, mm -hmm. the police tell you to go back home. Yes. And the soldiers are on the streets. Mm -hmm. So there is almost limited maximum human uh, limited human movement mm -hmm. that affects industries like the flower industry yes because now nobody's buying yeah and nobody nobody has a place to take these products to mm -hmm. in, in the long run mm -hmm. yes. and in the long run we have to do restructuring yes. because this effect it might go on beyond march or it might be contained in march but the damage is still there how can let's begin with companies balance their balance sheet by, towards the end of quarter one um, I, I watched uh, President Trump said that this thing may go up to August. Mm -hmm. He said so last night. So we are in it for a long time. It's not just the end of March. So companies must really think through it. Now look, private sector employers must make drastic decisions because mm -hmm. private sector employers cannot pay employees who are not working. Okay. Why? Because first of all, employees must work so that you get what to pay them. Yes. Now, if they're not working, then there's no money coming into the company, then how will you pay them? Mm -hmm. That means private sector employers are going to fire mm -hmm. the employees. Now, that is going to worsen the current situation of massive unemployment in this country. Yes. And these things, you know, they cause social unrest. Mm -hmm. Government needs to think through these things. Mm -hmm. How do we encourage private sector to maintain their employees? Okay. And uh, how do we encourage private sector to improvise so that workers can now work from home mm -hmm. and make use make good use of technology 
there are so many things that can be done from home. Yes. Actually, people don't have to physically be in offices in some of these instances where we go to the office every day. Mm -hmm. Technology has come in such a way that we can work from home. Okay. So I think private sector employers should now encourage, should now see how their workers can work from mm -hmm. home and still pay, pay them for what they have done. Okay. Now in 30 seconds, because my director says we have to wind up, I want to know what are some of the top three things that the government can prioritize in terms of restructuring and buffering its people against economic uh, an economic catastrophe? One, the government can provide uh, fiscal financial stimulus packages for industry, for businesses, so that at least they find it easier and more affordable to operate. Mm -hmm. Two, the government can provide incentives for food importers because it's going to be a big problem up here mm -hmm. in, when we have food shortages. Three, the government should find a way of en enhancing the capacity of our medical infrastructure as mm -hmm. it stands. Mm -hmm. Because if this thing uh, blows up in this country, our hospitals are inadequate, our staff are insufficient, we don't have enough drugs, mm -hmm. we don't have medical supplies, we need to address those. Thank you so much, Mike, for making time. Thank you, Andrea. Let's hope the government will address these things. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you for having me. There you have it. Asante.